Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to take a look at this Power Mac G4. Yes, I got another Power Mac G4. This is not the same as I showed in the last video that I made on MDD. That particular machine is still in position of my girlfriend and she uh, still has that machine and uh, does all the stuff uh, she wants to do with it. And uh, my brother ended up buying a lot of Power Macs, or at least a couple of PCs that include a couple of Power Macs. And uh, this was one of them uh, that he just didn't want. So uh, I got it, and that's uh, that's awesome. So this is a Power Mac G4 MDD, as you can tell by the mirror drive doors, because that's what MDD stands for. Behind these are, of course, the optical drives. Uh, the top bay is more popular than mine. I have the optical drive in the bottom. Uh, the first one broke, or the original one. It just wouldn't read anymore. So on the front we have the uh, speaker, which is not uh, wrecked yet. We have the power button, which is more of a touch button. The uh, headphone jack here. And on the front these uh, grills are not just for show. These are actually intakes. So that's pretty neat. Of course we have uh, all the handles around. Let me just attempt to uh, turn it around a little bit. On the side we just have an opening door with a latch. You can just pull it and all the parts will come out. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. And on the back is where all the magic happens. Of course we get all these holes for venting so all the hot air can escape this way. We have a total of one, two, three, four, five expansion bays of which I'm missing a blank. That's a little bit uh, Triggering for some people maybe. Uh, we have a lock up here, you can put a padlock through this so nobody can get inside the machine. Very handy. And of course spring load as you can tell. In terms of ports here on the back, we've got two USB 1.1 ports, two Firewire 400 ports, a gigabit ethernet 56k modem. We have a line in, a line out and a special uh, speaker connector. This is for the special uh, spherical uh, uh, Apple Pro speakers that came with the iMac G4 as well. I have those, I will dig them up and uh, put them in the setup as soon as we're going to test the machine. And on the bottom would appear to be a Kensington safety lock. So nobody can actually steal the machine. This will not prevent people from stealing the machine, unless you put the Kensington lock through that thing. But uh, it will at least prevent people from getting inside. Speaking of getting inside, let's get inside. Like I said, Pull it like so. It is heavy, so you gotta support it a little bit. So let's start in the back of the machine. Giggity. So here is the optical drive cage. You can pretty easily take these out. Here in the back we have a power supply. This is an Ekbel unit, rated for up to 108 watts. Or that's just the combined output for those two rails. Uh, 360. Yeah, this is the 360 watt. This is a, uh, a later revision uh, power supply. These originally came with, I think, a 400 watt, but that was extremely loud, but, you know, this 380 is actually very loud as well. Probably the fan bearings are gone. Uh, here in the back we have a drive cage for two IDE drives. Currently there's one installed, it's an 80 gig Seagate. And I think that drive is also connected. One drive isn't connected here, so... But uh, yeah, that Seagate is not connected, or is connected, I mean that has uh, Mac OS X Tiger and Mac OS 9.2.2 on it. Here we have another drive cage, which is also very easy to pull out. You just push a tab and it will basically slide out, like so. Whoops. As you can see, we've got two more IDE drives in there. The top one here is not connected. It's also a Seagate drive, 80 gig. It has my original Leopard install, which I uh, don't actually want to use anymore. And in the bottom slot is a SATA drive. And you might be wondering, a Power Mac G4 with SATA? That's interesting. Well, yes, I actually added SATA to this machine. More on that in a little bit. So, let's take a closer look at the main logic board now. There we go. Yeah, it is nice. So here is the massive heatsink, because this machine is a dual processor G4. This has a dual 1 GHz PowerPC G4 with 1 MB of level 3 cache. Uh, between the uh, cooler here and the video card, as you can see, are the RAM slots. There are four in there. This machine will support up to 2 GB of RAM, which is currently what's installed with two 1 GB modules. 
It originally came with 512 megs, this machine. So, there's that. Here is the video card. This is a Radeon 9000 Pro. It is not particularly easy to upgrade a graphics card in a machine like this. Uh, in newer Intel Macs, you can just put in a PC card in a PCI Express slot, and uh, if it doesn't support EFI, you will just have a black screen until the operating system is loaded. But this machine, of course, it being AGP, uh, there is no such thing, and you actually have to flash a Mac ROM in order for it to work. Even if you have an AGP card with a Mac ROM flash to it, it might not work in this machine. Because these G4 Power Macs uh, have a 4x AGP connection down there. So that means that if you have a card that runs in 8x mode, you'll have to uh, tape a couple of pins so it will force it to run in 4x mode. And uh, that's the only real way to get a newer graphics card or faster one working in here. Of course at the expense of possible OS 9 support, because if you want a core image uh, to run in Leopard, you will need a Radeon 9500 or better, or basically a GeForce FX 5200, I think, or better. But those cards do not support Mac OS 9 anymore, so you'll lose that functionality. So I decided to just keep the 9000 Pro. It's a 64 Mac card, but it's good enough for what it is. In a middle slot here, which is totally black, so you might not be able to properly see it, is a silicon image 3112 SATA card. This is not an official Mac uh, Sonnet card, for instance because those are like 80 bucks on eBay, this, this one was like 15. All I really had to do was put it in a PC, cross flash it for Mac support, and uh, well, now it works fine. Now I've got two ports on this one for uh, SATA drives, so if I wanted to add another SATA hard drive, I could do that. The only downside is uh, Mac OS 9 doesn't support uh, SATA at all, but uh, Mac OS 10 certainly does, especially Tiger and Leopard, they work rather well. Uh, I forgot to mention, by the way, that hard drive in there is not just a normal hard drive, it's a 150GB, 10,000 RPM Western Digital Raptor, so that's pretty cool. Um, and last but not least, in the slots here, uh, we have a uh, VIA-based, I think, uh, USB 2.0 PCI card. One internal port, as you often see, and four external ports. In which I actually have a Bluetooth stick here which I might actually need for another project soon, so I'm gonna pull that out and put it aside. So that's basically it on the inside of the machine. It does support wireless, but only the, uh, I think the older style, I'll just recheck real quick. Yeah, it uses the older PC card slot here for the uh, wireless card. I don't think it supports the Airport Extreme at all. Which is kind of sad, because I have an Airport Extreme card laying around with some other Power Mac G5 parts that will... That, uh, that are pretty nice. Um, so yeah, that basically concludes the exterior tour here of the machine. So, I think what we should do is fire this wind tunnel up and uh, see how she runs. Alright, we're good to go. I say that. Yeah, it's loud. <laughs> Even the bomb is loud. Alright, so let's move closer to the monitor here. I'm going to assume it's going to boot into Leopard, because that's the last other system that I used. And it doesn't know this display, so it'll be a hell of a lot bigger. I'm kind of kicking myself now for actually mostly selling off my spare monitors. I only really have this thing left. Which I only basically use for uh, testing machines upstairs on the attic. And uh, for my servers, of course. So yeah, it's pretty worn out. And it's got a big scratch in it, like you can see. But it works. And uh, yeah, there we go. That's our Leopard install right there. Alright. I'm not sure why it opened Spotify here. This version doesn't work anymore, by the way. But it used to work up until, I don't know, a couple months ago. 
But yeah, I've given this Leopard installation a theme. This is called Leopard Rebirth, and of course. Uh, that means that you get some effects like you see in uh, Sierra, High Sierra, uh, El Capitan and Yosemite. The new styling. So let's take a look at our system profiler real quick. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is the ATA bus. We can see our DVD drive here which is an Hitachi LG. It also says ATA bus for the SATA car because it's, I think it's doing a translation or some sort. Uh, there is our Western Digital Caviar, or well, Western Digital Corporation, I think the C is actually for. Um, Velociraptor, 150 gig, 10,000 RPMs, very nice. And a longer Bluetooth with the built in audio, whatever. Here we have the 2 gigs of RAM. It is PC 3200 memory, but it's running at PC 2600 for some reason. Possibly because the memory controller simply can't do any faster than that. When we go to the PCI cards, we find a two-channel SATA card, and we find a PCI 14C to whatever the fuck uh, card for the USB controller. No parallel SCSI, obviously. No SAS. No burning, it's just a DB reader. No super drive, as Apple would call it. Uh, let's see, in a video card here, ATI RV250 RD9000 Pro. So that's very nice. I was actually jerking around with like uh, installing a Windows 95 virtual machine on this machine just for shits and giggles. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I might do that at a later point. I'm not Druaga. <laughs> Anyways. So yeah, I'm not currently connecting to the internet, so I won't show any online things. But uh, overall, this machine is quite usable. For instance, here is Microsoft Office Word 2004, which would be an accurate version for a machine like this to run. So if we change to a other uh, style here, you can see that's perfectly fine. We also get. Uh, Spell checker, which I'll have to do a control click for, I'm pretty sure. There we go. Doesn't know what to do with it because it's all gibberish, and it is. Uh, don't save. Good time machine, of course, because it's Leopard. Another great thing about this Leopard Rebirth theme is that you actually, can actually get a PowerPC store, like an actual app store for PowerPC. Uh, this will not load because I'm not connected to the internet, but it contains quite a bit of useful little uh, PowerPC software that will make your life a little bit easier on these machines. I mean, of course, they are hopelessly obsolete, but it's just fun to go through that. So that's what we got on here. Uh, I think we can do Photoshop here before we boot into the other operating systems to show those. There we go. CS2, the last version will run on PowerPC. It's really not terribly slow to load. Uh, fuck off with your updates, I don't want to. It's uh, really not bad at all. So I also got some stuff like VLC and iTunes and uh, Geekbench even. UView that no longer properly works. Uh, Tinker Tool, 104 Fox obviously to go on the web. And basically not all that much else. Let's press system preferences here. And switch to one of our other operating systems. So as you can see we've got our triple boot set up here. Um, we've got Mac OS 10.4. I think we're gonna skip Tiger and we're just gonna go for a 922 because that's the most interesting thing. And I think it's also pretty awesome that you can run a machine with both the uh, oldest operating system, basically from the classic Mac OS 9.2.2 all the way up to Leopard on these machines. That's quite cool. I mean, the machine that predates this thing is the uh, Power Mac G4 Quicksilver, 
and the single CPU version of that didn't even support Leopard because it is a 733 MHz G4. And ooh, that's not good. <laughs> it would seem that our Mac OS 9 uh, partition has uh, shit to bed. Or it's trying to look for it from the uh, from the Raptor, yeah, that's what it was doing. It was checking the Raptor for the device drivers. Now it's booting from the IDE controller. Had me worried there for a second. It is definitely not the fastest starting up operating system for sure, but, uh, you know, it's okay. It behaves better than a two-year-old Windows XP installation, that's for sure. Because that gets hella slow after a while, if you don't maintain it at all. You don't really get that problem that much with this uh, classic Mac OS here. Let's see, our resolution is set to 1024 by 768. We can do a little bit higher than that, but I'm actually fine with this. So I can actually see what's going on. So I've got some more stuff on here, I think. I'll have to check. Uh, apparently we've got Quake 3 Arena. Let's see if we can do a benchmark run on that. Not putting any CD key, you can go fuck yourself. Let's see what settings I'm on, 1280, 1024, yeah, let's just... Let's put it at 1024 by 768. That's a bit more sensible on this uh, display. And let's go to the thingy. Uh, time demo one. Time demo is now enabled. And now we should be able to time demo it by running the four demo. So we can get an idea of the frame rate you can expect in Quake 3 Arena. So if you can play games with the machine at all. <laughs> Well, I think that's pretty clear. We got 80.8 .8 frames per second on Quake 3 Arena on this Parmac G4. That's pretty good. At all maxed settings at 1024 by 768. So that Radeon 9000 Pro is quite a beefy graphics card for playing old games. And that's one of the main reasons I've got Mac OS 9 on here. It's not just because I can, but it's also because uh, the majority of the Mac game library was actually for a classic Mac OS and not that much for OS X. So there's a really huge library of games you can try on this. And that's pretty cool. I don't have that much on here either, I see. But uh, I definitely wanted to show that little game there. Also got Microsoft Office here. This is Microsoft Office 98 for Macintosh. And instead of Clippy, you get the little Mac down there, which is pretty sweet. So let's go for a uh, supply design. Presentation designs. Oh yeah, that one's snazzy. Mm, oh yeah. That's 90s right there. So yeah, there's basically that. Let's close all those windows. Even have windows on a Mac. All right. So the stuff we got on here is uh, iTunes, which is pretty fun. Uh, no, don't find MP3s. I'll do that myself. If you have a shared library on your network, you can actually connect to it using iTunes 2.0 because this is 2.0, right? That's iTunes help. Fuck, that's the wrong one. Oh right, it's on file, isn't it? Or what? No, what? That's help fewer. About iTunes. There we go. iTunes 2.0.4. And another thing that's pretty cool to have on this is iMovie. Did you see, by the way, how fast that opened? That's pretty remarkable. I mean, you could you could 
possibly edit standard definition video on this pretty well, I would assume. These PowerPC chips are really no slouch on tasks like that. It's just that on the more general things, they tend to be a bit slower because of their weird architecture. But for actually power usage, they were pretty cool. And I don't mean power usage as in what it draws from the wall, because that's sometimes not that great. Uh, these G4s are alright, but the G5 is just... That's just, just a big old space heater. Even worse than the Pentium 4 in that regard. But, uh, yeah. I think that covers the PowerMac G4 NDD dual 1.0 GHz right here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.